following tools are required. First, take out the baskets. Put the rails back in. The baskets are taken out in order to easily reach the disc that holds the air chamber. To remove the air chamber itself you need a set of pliers. We will now take off the top plate. Now make sure to put on gloves when opening the machine because of possible sharp edges. Unmount two screws on the back. Push the plate backwards and lift it off. Before removing the side plates, it is advised to first take off the lower bezel. Open the door in an angle of roughly 45 degrees. There are clips on the left and right next to the legs. Push them down with your hand to unhook the bezel. Next step is removing the side plates. Each plate is held by one screw. The side plates are hooked on top, so pull the plate up and take it out. We will now remove the door. Do not yet unmount the six screws on top. They hold the display and we will remove those later. When you remove the final screw, hold the door and gently pull it out from the clips on the top. For assembly, it is easier to first put on the front cover and then the display. Unplug the cables for the detergent dispenser and the rinse aid. We will now take off the display. Open the door and unmount the six screws. Now be aware that the display screws are longer than the other door screws, so do not mix them. When you unmount the final screw, hold the display with your other hand. Unplug the display connector. Also note the Wi-Fi module, which is directly connected to the display PCB. The red connector goes to the three status LEDs on the front. These are in place since this is a full built under unit with a touch panel on the top. On the right side you see the pointy screws for the door metal. And on the left side you see the screws that go into the plastic of the display. We will now focus on the door. First, use pliers to remove the clamp of the steam hose and then plug the hose. Remove the ground wire. You may place back the screw. This helps later in the assembly so you know where the ground wire goes. To lift out the door, you need to put the left and the right hinge in a certain position. Slightly lift the door. This allows you to push the piece of black plastic on the leg holder. Now the hinge is loose and free to move. Repeat this for the other hinge. Open the door roughly to 45 degrees and lift it out. The next step is to remove the tub from the base. To do this we start with the removal of the filter and the salt container cap. Now remove all screws that hold the sump and the spray arm. It's easiest to start with the two spray arm screws. Now remove all the other screws that hold the sump and the water guide. Do not remove the water guide itself. Remove the salt container holder. Use pliers to remove the cap of the water jacket. Unhook the harness clips. Unplug three connectors. We 
loosen the two ground wires and put the screws back in. Take off the black plastic piece and the white clip behind it. Take off the lower cover by removing the three screws. Tip, in case you only need to get to the drain pump, take off the front plate of the door and the lower bezel and the middle screw that holds this flap. Take off the plate. From here we can see the whole base, such as the pump motor, the pump housing with the heater, the drain pump, the soil sensor for auto detection of dirt and water, and the salt container that keeps the water softener container working correctly. Now release the cable and the white clip on the other side. water and air guide. Now unhook the water and air guide, but leave the unit in. Be aware that this water and air guide is always filled with a few liters of water, and taking it out will cause an open flow of water. Remove two screws on the lower back bar. Do not remove the top frame. Before taking off the cabinet from the base, check if the leg can freely move and isn't clipped. Remove this plastic part, check if the sum does not stick to the cabinet. Now take off the cabinet from the base. We will now discuss some of the base components. This is the impeller disc for the spray arms, aka the Vario disc. Depending on the program settings, the disc can be rotated into several positions. For example, for a half load program, you will only need to use the lower or the upper spray arm. Lift up the sump. This is the heater connection, the direct drive, dishwasher motor. Mr. and make sure there is always a good ground. Now looking at the drain pump, disconnect it and rotate it clockwise, which is sometimes a bit difficult. Be careful not to break the connector of the drain pump. To access the steam generator, remove the clamp and take off the hose. Remove two screws. Now you can see a little bowl, which is in place for steam generation. From the steam hose we take out a cap. This cap goes in the housing. When hot water is being pushed upwards, the bowl pushes against the cap prevents water from flowing through the steam hose. When steam is produced, there is not enough pressure for the ball to go up. The steam passes along the ball, through the steam hose, to the nozzles on the front, into the cabinet. This is the aqua sensor, the noise filter, and the balance weight, which is connected by one screw. This is the resin container. During normal dishwashing, water comes in through the resin container, the sump, via the water guides onto the dishes. The resin container collects the calcium and magnesium from the rinsing water. This prevents a white film on your dishes. Dishwasher salt is added periodically to clean the resin container, so it's able to do its work. When there is steam in the tub, pressure can build up. This pressure is reduced by this gap in the air and water guide. This may cause some moisture in the base or the side. When 
and water flows in goes along an impeller which is connected to a hall sensor that counts how much water comes in. There is also a power line connected to a valve. When a leakage is detected, the valve inside blocks further water from flowing into the unit. The main PCB is connected with clips. To get the cover off, remove one screw. Here you find the connectors to the main power, the heater, display PCB, sensors and more. This completes the XD Dishwasher Disassembly movie. Please also check the assembly movie. Thank you for watching.